Our next drug class that we're going to cover is the benzodiazepines. A benzodiazepine intoxication is kind of similar to an alcohol intoxication. However, we're going to have a mild respiratory depression. We're going to see the ataxia, the amnesia, the hypersomnia. It's going to act as a depressant. You may see some nystagmus, so some uh, eye movements, and then also slurred speech. It all sim seems pretty similar to our alcohol intoxication. So the profile of the uh, benzodiazepine intoxication is going to be pretty similar most likely won't see the two combined together on test day. Um, you may get some other options such as cocaine, some amphetamines, uh, maybe an opioid, and a hallucinogen. You won't see benzodiazepine uh, intoxication and alcohol intoxication most likely together. Next, what about the withdrawal symptoms? I said it has a very good similar similarity to alcohol, so again, um, you're going to see the anxiety, the autonomic instability. Remember, we covered that pretty well in detail with the alcohol discussion. We'll also see some agitation, some seizures, hallucinations. Um, the withdrawal symptoms are going to be worse with short-acting benzos. What do I mean? Well, we have different benzodiazepines. The ending for most benzodiazepines is... Am. So benzodiaz uh, uh, clonazepam, we have alprazolam, midazolam. Um, so most of them will end in am. So we have different classes. Some are short acting, some are medium acting, and some are long acting. So they can last for days. The medium acting can last for lots of hours, and the short acting can last for a few hours at most. Xanax, or alprazolam, the generic name for it, so let me write that. So alprazolam is going to be a very short-acting benzodiazepine. Short-acting diazepines, benzodiazepines, are gonna have more withdrawal symptoms than the long-acting benzodiazepines. So if, if you have a question where you have multiple benzodiazepines that are listed, which one is most likely to cause withdrawal, always choose the shortest acting benzo. So um, that'll lead to the worst withdrawal symptoms. Lastly, how are we gonna treat a benzodiazepine overdose or an intoxication? We're gonna give flumazenil. And flumazenil is going to be a benzodiazepine receptor antagonist. It's going to block that benzodiazepine receptor, so that way it will not open as much. Going back to the uh, benzodiazepines, let's do a little bit of pharmacology just because I do enjoy my pharmacology. Um, benzos act via the GABA A receptor primarily, and what they do is they're going to take this receptor and increase the frequency of chloride so chlorides that ion, influx. So it's going to increase the frequency of this channel. So when benzodiazepines bind to this GABA-A receptor, or this GABA-A complex, they're going to have this nice benzo receptor waiting for them. When they bind, they're going to open up this channel and let chloride in by increasing the frequency of that opening of the channel. Now we also have another class, the barbiturates, which are also going to act on the GABA-A receptor, and they're going to have their own nice receptor waiting for them on this complex. However, instead of increasing the frequency of the chloride ion influx, the barbiturates, for the most part, are going to increase the duration of the, the channel being open, so you get a greater influx of chloride ion as well. So they're both going to kind of mediate the same effects. However, our benzodiazepines are going to be more common our barbiturates are not as common nowadays. They have a worse uh, side effect profile than our barbiturates do, or than our benzodiazepines do. So the benzos, for the most part, at least by the time that I'm making this video, are going to be more popular than our barbiturates, and they act on the GABA-A receptor.